Okay, this video is about how to do random enemy spawning. So, you have the screen box at the bottom there, or right in the middle there, in between the two purple blocks. And it's going to spawn these red slugs randomly. Um, and when the green box hits the, bl the block, the purple block, then it's going to bounce off that and move the other direction. And once it hits the other block on the right, it's going to bounce and go to the left, left to right, right to left. Um, so that way that the slugs can come out randomly in any direction and um, they can come out slow, they can come out fast. It just depends on uh, the coding you put in there and this is random. So it's going to come out slow and it's going to come out fast and then go back. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's a slug now coming out. He's on a path to hits that block. It's going to shoot out, and then it's going to shoot out another one. You can destroy it too by clicking on it, and you can see that the blood rotates on a splatter using the effect in Game Maker. So these blocks, when, when you play your game, this is just a test. See, now they come out too. So, the way, I'm just showing you how this is set up right here. But when you do your game, you would want to take these blocks here, grab all of them by holding down the shift button, and then dragging it down. That's another shortcut. Okay, and then you want to go into your your spawn block and make sure it's not checked and then your block you want to make sure it's not uh, visible but you want to make sure that your block is solid but not visible and your spawn is going to hit the block and it's going to do a reverse using in the move tab do a reverse for self on the block but make sure the block is solid otherwise it'll go right through it okay so <clears throat> Let me talk about the spawn right here since I have it open. So the depth zero, it's not visible. Then in the crate, you want to do an alarm. Go to your main two tab, bring in an alarm, and then you want to say random, um, parentheses 450, then in parentheses. You can change this number to whatever you want. I just, I just kept it at 450. You can change it to three or two or whatever. If you make the number smaller, it's probably going to come out faster come out and I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate let me I'll change that to like one so 150 alarm zero kick in then you also want to make this the same 150 otherwise it's not going to work correctly all right so both the crate has a random of 150 the alarm zero is going to kick in and then it's going to do the, the alarm 150 and it's going to spawn your enemy and set it to relative. Make sure it's relative because your enemy is set to the middle, centered, and also your spawn is also centered in the middle too. So it's going to come out right in this area right here. So your spawn, your slug will come out right in this location here when you set it to relative and you have your crosshairs in, in the middle. <clears throat> and you also want the crosshairs in the middle because when you click on your slug the um, game maker effect will splatter the blood out in this center area right here if you don't have this centered then it could uh, splatter your effect in this location here if you have it to zero zero because that's your then it's going to it's going to splatter the blood right here and you don't want that because you want it to be on the object itself because it doesn't make sense to have it outside your object so make sure you center it so that's where the blood's going to splatter right in that middle there all right and I'll come back to that in a minute let me just talk about the spawn again so yeah so it's going to do the random where it's going to shoot out the enemy set it to relative and then 
once and the block is moving at one two speeds you can make that one if you wanted to or five or whatever if you want to make it go faster or, s or slower doesn't matter so it's going to move at two speed going left and then once it hits that block it's going to go in reverse go from left to right right to left and then your block just have to make sure it's set to solid do not have it visible then um, your your blood this is your blood for your um, your bad guy when you hit it when you click down on the mouse make sure it's centered as well and it's the same image size of course you only need that one image because you have a code in here go to add event create code this code right here I've talked about in the past in my previous videos. This is image underscore ang angle equals I random at 360. So it's going to rotate this image randomly at 360. So you only need this one image in here. And every time you click on the the enemy, then it's the code is randomly going to uh, rotate the image three, in three. 360 degrees so it can go um, in different degrees it can, go, it can go from 270 which is down I believe or it could go 0 which is to the right or it can go 180 which is the left or it can go 90 which is I believe is up so it could go it could it could do any of those movements or it could also do an angle in between 0 and 90 or 180 and 270 so that's what's happening here in this code right here it's going to, when you click on the, the enemy then it's going to splatter the blood and it's going to rotate an image possibly any any images within you know from 0 to 360 you could do any of those images in between 0 and 60 360 then you have another code in here which is talking about the fade effect which I talked about in my previous video. It's going to slowly fade away so you hit it, hit the slug and it's going to show the blood and it's, it's going to rotate any angle from zero between 0 and 360 and it's going to slowly fade away. So it's going to be solid at first, that's why you have it speed at 0 and then it's slowly going to fade away using this fade effect and it also has a step event which is going to finish out the fade effect code right here and it's going to slowly go away you could change this number to anything you wanted if you change this number to like five or something then the fade will happen faster i believe and then it's going to go then it's going to finally go to zero and then it's going to destroy the the, the blood and then you have um a splat splat um sound in there so when you click down on the enemy it's going to do a splat sound and it's not going to repeat then you also want to go to your move tab and you want to make sure you in your path so you want to end path I'll talk about path in a minute but you want to end the path so it's on a path and in order to destroy you have to destroy the path so you want to make sure you do end path here then you want to also have a move fixed and make sure your direction is in the middle and speed zero. If you do not use the end path and you only use this move fixed to speed zero, it's not going to stop the it's not going to stop the stop the blood. So you, the enemy is moving in a, on a path, right? When you click down on the mouse, it's going to switch the image to a blood splat. When that happens, if you only have this move fixed in here, it's going to still move the blood up and down and you don't want that you want to make sure it stops so in order for it to stop you have to destroy you have to destroy the end path first because it's on a, it's on a path see so you gotta make sure you destroy the end path and you also want to make sure you do the move fixed that way it'll stop the animation from happening it'll stop making the enemy go on to a path even though he's destroyed it'll stop making him go on a path and it also will keep them at that location where you clicked on it at by using the move, um, the move fix position. Okay. And that's it for that. Make sure the depth is zero. And then we'll talk about the enemy here. So the enemy is on a path. First talk about the variable. Um, the enemy 
has two animations happening here. You can see how it goes really quick. You don't. You, I talked about this before in my previous video. You want to save on image speed. You don't have to have several images in here for the animation. You just need two different types of animations to show the movement. Then you want to use this var statement, which is in the control tab, and say image underscore speed value is 0 0.2. If you do 0 0.1, he'll really go slower when he moves up the path, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Two will go a little faster on the animation, and that's all you need. Then you want to create your path. You just create your path on, so you go to your folder, right click, and then create your path. I've already created mine, so um, this is my path I created. So all you do is you just, let me make another one I'll, I'll demonstrate here, so, because I don't want to mess it up. Create a path, and what you do is, and I've already talked about this in my previous videos too, so all you do is just click on it, make a, make a dot, make a dot, make a dot, make a dot. You press this arrow up here to make it go up on screen. Press this arrow, go down. This goes to the right. This goes to the left. So you create your path, how how long you want to make it. Then I don't want to make it. I don't want. I don't want to close my path. I want to have it open. So uncheck closed. And then I don't like it straight. I mean, you can move these dots. However, you want to make it. You know. But I don't like it. I don't like the straight line. So I want to do a curve. Then you can rotate, move these dots. And you could delete it as well. So whatever is highlighted, you can delete it. And then you could add another one somewhere. So you can just drag it and you can make more. So you're adding it. You're just making more curves. And then you can drag it to round it up. Whatever you want to do here. This green one is at the end line. So you can drag that down. And then go down on the arrow to drag it down. Then go up and drag it up. And then you can also delete lines too. Delete. So whatever is highlighted in red, you can delete that. Delete. Delete. So it's now becoming more of a curve now. So that's how you can make your curves. And then you just say, you check this. When you, once you're done, you check it. Or you can go back into it, of course. Then you, get your map, then you have your path, right? Then you go into your move tab, and then you drag over a set path. And then you just go in here and then click on this and find your path you have. Put it there. I set my speed to 5 for the character to move. I have a reverse on it so it will go up and then you will go back down if you haven't destroyed them yet. And then set it to relative. You can also do a stop or continue from start or continue from here. I'm not going to talk about that because I've already talked about that in my previous video. But um, you know, you can, you can stop if you want to. Continue and start, continue here. So it depends on what you want to do. So I just did a reverse, so he goes up off screen, then he comes down from the off screen back down so you can see him again. Then he goes back up, then go back down until you destroy him. And you can change the speed if you want to higher or lower, whatever you want to do. I'm going to destroy, delete this path because I already have path zero, which is what I liked. And you can move this out, up, and you can, like I said, use these arrows to go down and up on the screen over that direction, left or right, or up and down. And then, I'm not talking about this stuff right here, I'm not really sure what this really does. I think it's just helping me go up and down on the screen. I'm not going to save it. Okay, then you have your left pressed. 
when you do a left press event, it's going to do a in the draw tab, bring over a create effect. I did a, I chose fire firework. There's other effects you can choose here. Then X and Y zero. I did a small. Then I ch chain you know chose a color here, and then I did above the object, and then do relative. So it's going to happen right in, in between those crosshairs in the center. That's where the the fireworks going to happen at. Um, and also, I wouldn't do too many effects because, like I said, it could slow down your computer or slow down your device. So, I did, before I started this video, I did medium and it kind of slowed my computer down when I clicked on it. So, I did small. You don't have to do an effect if you don't want to. You can also do effects by using, you know, go into Photoshop and make your own animated effect. And it'd be a series of images versus using the effect in Game Maker. So, it's up to you. I don't know, I don't use too many effects because it slows down things. So, but that's what you can do here. And then it's also going to switch the enemy, the slug enemy, to the got hit. So the got hit is this got hit image right here. And that's that's about it. So there's a lot of steps here. Um, like I said, I've talked about this in my previous videos with the state effect and the rotating the angle images. Um, like I said, I would just open this, I'll give you this file here so you can download the file and you can open it up and, um, mess around with all these settings here I have set up here. And let me demonstrate one more time. So I kind of changed a couple things around. Now it's off screen, you can't see it. Now it comes up slower. And it's doing the image rotation and the fade effect. I didn't get that one, so it's coming back down again. And it's kind of slowing down the... See, it's kind of slow using the effects. Now, one thing that spawning does, it kind of overlaps your characters, too. So that's, only, that's the only drawback about using spawning, is it kind of overlaps your images. I don't know how to control that. See how it overlaps one another. So I'm not sure how you could avoid that. I don't know. Maybe if you do solid for the, the image here, it may work. Screen's starting to be blurred for some reason. Okay. I don't know that might that might fix it. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks it looks like it's not overlapping anymore. So if you don't if you do solid for the oh it still does overlapping. I don't know. See, it kind of works because when they oh no they really don't they're not, they're still overlapping. Yep. So and you can do a game like this. You can do a game where you have a a timer, and I've talked about timer in the past, but I can add to this tutorial later on. You can add a timer to it. Um, if the timer, you know, goes to zero, then game's over. Or if you hit so many slugs, you can jump to the next room. That's what I'm kind of doing with my game now. It's called Move or Splat, and so you have to hit so many slugs, and you move to the next room. First, you it starts out with 20, and then it goes to 40, and then 50, and 60, and then 100, or whatever. So, and if the time runs out, then the game's over. So, it's a little small game you can make using spawning. Alright, well thanks for watching.